The first step of your animal hybrid project, you need multiple images of different animals that you'd like to put together. I'm going to use a rhinoceros, so I just googled rhino photo, and I'm looking through the images to see which one would be best for my project. When you scroll through, there's a couple things you're looking for. If you wanted to add something like wings on his back, you would want space for those wings, like this photo here. But when I click on it, the photo's really small in this picture frame, and that tells me that there's not a lot of resolution to it, and you want a high resolution photo so that when you zoom in, it doesn't become blurry. So as I click on these and think about if they would be good for my project, I'm looking for the size of the photo here. This is a really good size. I think it has pretty good resolution. It's very clear and crisp. And then also, if I was to add something to it, would it fit in the picture frame? If this is good for me, I'm just right-clicking, Save Image As, and I'm going to find my desktop and my photography folder, and then I'll label it something that is easy to remember or you can have multiple folders in here that kind of keep it organized. And I'm going to make sure that it's a JPEG format. If this, if it doesn't say JPG and it's a different letters, it means that it will not open on Photoshop. So you might have to hunt around to find a good image. Once I hit save, I'm going to go and find at least two other animals because you need three to complete your project. Once I have all my images saved onto my desktop, I'm going to open each one of them in a tab. So here I have a whale, I'm going to put moth wings on my whale, and I'm going to add this kind of uh, amphibian eye to it. So I'm going to show you a couple tools that might be new to you. Whenever I start a Photoshop project that I'm going to have multiple layers, it's going to be pretty involved like this first project. What I'm going to do is I'm always going to duplicate my background. So what I do is I come over to my layer here, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to hit duplicate layer. It asks you if you want to name the layer, you can if you want to, I'm just going to hit OK. And here I have a background copy. This just kind of saves my background just in case I need it and need to go back to it, and we'll be working on this copy. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to my moth wing, and apply it to my whale. I need to use the quick selection tool that we showed in the last tutorial because I want to select a wing to then bring over. I'm going to make sure I'm adding to my selection and I'm dragging around the wing to make sure I have all the lines on the right areas. It's selected a little bit too much so I'm going to do my subtraction because I just want that wing like this. Once I have it perfectly outlined, oops, be careful that, see this little dot is not selected, so just be careful you get everything. I'm going to click on my move tool and that allows me to click and drag this wing wherever I need to. Without unclicking, I'm going to drag it up to my whale, wait for the file to switch over, and then let go, and here I have my wing, and it created a new layer with just my wing over here. If I ever want to not see it, you can unclick so you can kind of see what's on that layer. What I need to do is I need to be able to manipulate this wing and turn it different ways. How I do that is I go up to Edit, Free Transform, and that gives me a box that I can now size. If I drag my cursor outside the box, I can rotate. So I'm going to place it on my whale. I'm going to make it kind of big. I don't really want it too skewed because I want it to look realistic. I think I'll place it right there on his back. Once I have exactly where I want it, I'm going to either hit the enter key or you can hit the cursor, the move tool and it'll ask you if you want to apply and you say yes. But it looks kind of awkward because it's not blended into my whale. So I'm going to use a new tool to try to make this wing look like it's a part of the whale. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the eraser tool. Now what this does is it really just simply erases the image that you're working on. If I had my background clicked, it would erase the whale. If I want to work on my moth wing, I need to select my layer that the moth wing is on. So make sure that you're on the right layer that you want to manipulate. 
The cool thing about that er this eraser tool is up at the top, there is a choice that you can play with the opacity. Opacity means how strong your eraser is. If it's at 100%, it's going to erase the entire thing like that. I'm going to step backwards. But if I put it on, let's say, 30%, somewhere in there, it's only going to erase a portion of it. This way, by changing this opacity, I can try to get my wing to so start to blend into my whale. The other thing that's helpful is either changing the size of your circle that you're using and the hardness. I chose a really soft area around it so that when I erase, it, it blends even more gradually. So I'm going to see if I can carefully get this to blend in. I'm going to lower the opacity up in the wing and maybe make it a bit stronger so that I get rid of the line right where the wing reaches the whale. If I'm happy with that, one more thing that I can do is I can use the blur tool. The blur tool is found over here where this kind of liquid drop is. And if you hold it down, there's a couple different things that you can choose. The blur tool will simply blur your edges to make it look a little bit more realistic. If I ever want to change the shape of the swing or where it is uh, located, I can just do free transform again. I'm not sure why my computer keeps doing that. There we go. I kind of want to rotate it a little bit. Having an issue with it going kind of black, so I apologize. You shouldn't do that. So I just wanted to rotate it a little bit, and I think I'm pretty happy with that. The other thing that makes this wing seem like it's not a part of my whale is that it's so vibrant. It's very, very red, and the whale is so blue that the light hitting the wing would maybe make it look a little bit more bluish than it looks. So with this layer still selected, I'm going to go up to Image, Adjustments, and I'm going to go into my Color Balance. This is just um, balancing your color, and so I see that one uh, one side of this is red, one is cyan, and that's a little bit more blue, teal. So if I drag it over to the cyan, it starts to make my wing look a little more blue. I'm also going to use this yellow-blue slider and drag it to make it look quite blue. Once I'm happy with that, I can hit OK, and you'll notice that it just looks a little bit more realistic, like it's part of the picture frame there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a wing on the other side. Uh, I'm going to go back to my moth and select the other wing, so I'm going to deselect, and now I'm going to select the other side with my same quick selection tool. Try to get the nice outline, and I am not sure why it's blinking like that, but hopefully yours does not do that. Now I can click and drag because I've selected the Move tool. I'm going to hover over my first layer, bring it down, and drop, and now I have another moth wing. So you'll notice that it is on a different uh, angle that I want it. I would think that if the whale had wings, they would both be pointing backwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that Edit Free Transform and just bring it all the way across and flip it so that I am starting to, goodness gracious, I am starting to have a wing that would be in the same kind of direction like that. Now I need this wing to actually go on the other side of the whale, and there's a trick for that that's a little bit tricky, but I think you can do it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to unclick the eyes on these wings because I don't really want to see them right now. I just want to focus on the whale. To manipulate the whale, I definitely need to select that layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy this whale twice as kind of a cutout so I can put it on top of the wing I just um, had. 
I'm going to use the quick selection tool to select the whale. I don't really need the whole, well, he's easy, that's fine. And when I right click on my whale, there is an option to layer via copy. What's that going to do is going to create a new layer with just my selection. So if I click that, it doesn't really seem like something changed on here, but you'll notice over on your layers that I actually created a whole um, layer that's just my whale. So if I don't see anything else, all I see is this whale here. Now I'm going to put everything back on. And these layers are in order of which layer is on top of another one. So what I want to do is I want to bring this selection of just my whale in between my wings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this up in between the layers. And I noticed that the wrong wing popped behind it, so I'm going to have to switch my wings around. So now you'll notice this one I just manipulated looks good, and this one got popped behind the whale. And you can kind of see, see what I did there is that I just hit it behind a copy of my whale. I'm going to click back on this far wing, and so I can manipulate it further. I definitely want to free transform so that it looks more realistic. I want to do the same color adjustments using the color balance that I did on my other wing. It's a little bit further away as well, so I could actually change the brightness so that it looks a little bit darker, so it looks a little further away. Now I have added two wings that actually look like it's tucked behind the whale, it looks realistic, it's blended, so that would be a pretty successful one manipulation of your animal.